If you're going away on vacation, or if you're even just going away for one night, then there's always the thought of keeping your property secure. Well, in this quick video, I'm going to go through how you can keep it secure using Home Assistant, using an integration called Present Simulation. So it'll help simulate your lights and other devices whilst you're away. How it works is, is it copies the last week or the defined number of days of your devices so that it will simulate exactly what happened last week for example which I think is really simple but really great idea. Gone are the days of having manual timers on a couple of lamps where the lights just turn on at the same time predictably every night. I used it recently when we we're away and it worked a treat. In this video we're going to cover installing the Home Assistant Community Store commonly known as Hacks and then installing the present simulation integration and then finally the configuration of it and setting up some groups. So to install Hacks, you do need to have a GitHub account. This is probably to get around GitHub's rate limiting so that you can download reliably. I'm only going to show you one installation method and it's the simplest method in my opinion. And likewise with the present simulation as well. I'm only going to show you one installation method through Hacks, but there are other ways as well if you want to try some of those out. Hacks is great anyway for lots of other integrations. So I recommend having that installed if you haven't already. So I've got Home Assistant 2023.10.3 up on the screen. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Hacks. If you've already got that installed, then feel free to skip ahead. And if this section isn't enough for you, there's already great YouTubes out there that have done full videos on how to install Hacks. But we're going to quickly whistle through it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to your profile and make sure that advanced mode is enabled. So you can see here I haven't got advanced mode enabled. The reason we need to do this is because some add-ons aren't available if you haven't got that enabled. So we want to go to settings and then we want to go to add-ons and now we need to search for SSH. So this is what we're going to use to install hacks. Click install and wait a few minutes. Now we just want to press start on the add-on. Show in sidebar I recommend so that we can access it easily. So we're now in a terminal window and all we need to do is go to the hacks documentation and copy this line here and then paste it in. Take notes here it says do control shift V to paste it otherwise you tend to get some issues. So if you do that it pastes nicely. And there we go. Now we just need to restart Home Assistant. So let's go to developer tools, check configuration as you should always do and restart. Now that Home Assistant's back up and running, we want to go back to settings, and now we want to go and add an integration. So devices and services, add integration, and search for hacks. Let's press hacks. We have to tick the boxes for all of these things. So now we need to copy this code, and then we need to log in to GitHub. So now we want to paste the activation code into here, and then press authorize hacks. Now when you go back to Home Assistant, you can see it's been authorized. So we just click finish and then you can see hacks on the left here. Well now that we've got hacks installed, it's just a case of a few clicks to install present simulation. It's really easy to do. And if it doesn't work correctly at any stage, then just remember there's a lot of restarts of Home Assistant involved. So you might have forgotten one if it's not working as you expect. I highly recommend setting up helper groups as well so that you can put your groups of lights and switches that you want to be involved in the simulation all together. It will make it easier to set up your automations. Now that we have Hacks installed, we can now do a search for the present simulation integration. So this is what we want, so let's click this. Press download, download again. And you can see here it says where it's going to install it, which is in the custom components folder, as with all these integrations. Now that it's installed, we need to do a restart of Home Assistant again. So the reason that we had to restart Home Assistant again was so that the integration would be available. So if we now go to settings and integrations and now search for present simulation. And you can see that it's here available. So this is the bit where we do the configuration. So you can define entities or groups of entities here and you can separate them by commas so you can have more than one. What I recommend is, is that you have a group of entities for lights, a group for switches, and a group for covers or something like that if you want to do things like that as well. If you look at the documentation for present simulation, it'll tell you what types of groups that it works with. And you can see that it works with lights, switches, covers, and various other things as well. Basically anything that the Home Assistant service will turn on or off, which is actually quite a few different things, including things like input booleans. 
Right, so back to the settings. So next one down is the number of days. So what this means is, is how many days does it simulate? Go backwards. So if we put this as one, for example, it would simulate your devices every day at the same times from the previous day. Whereas if you put it seven days, it would look at the history for the last seven days. Now for this to work, you need to make sure that you've got the history with enough days. So we'll look through that in a minute and make sure that you have it set up correctly. The refresh interval is just how long it checks to see if it needs to do something. So I think 30 seconds should be fine for most people. And then restore state after simulation is basically if you turn off the simulation, should it set all of the devices back to how it was when you turned it on in the first place. And then finally, you can also add a random time of when they turn on and off. So it'll add so many minutes either side. So before we set this integration up, we're actually going to exit out of it and we're going to create some groups. So the best way of doing this is it under settings still under integrations, see at the top there's helpers. Now if you haven't used helpers before, you definitely should do, but if you have, then you know what to do. So we can go into here and we create groups and we can do groups of lights, switches, etc. Now if you want to have a group of lights, but some of your lights are actually switches, there's a nice helper here, change device type of switch. So basically you can change a switch to be something else, so that you can have all of your lights into one group. So now let's quickly create a light group, and then we can add the integration for the present simulation. I recommend calling the group something useful that relates to the present simulation, so you know what it's for. Now press submit and we've got the light group created. Now that we've got that group created, let's click into it and go to the cog and then we can do copy here because we'll need that in a second to set up the integration. So click integrations, search for present simulation and now we can paste that into here and then set the number of days as I mentioned before and then simply press submit. Now if we go to developer tools, we should see a new entity. So let's search for present and you can see the switch present simulation. So this is the thing that toggles the whole thing on and off. So if you want to turn on vacation mode, then you would simply turn this on. If it shows as unavailable like it does here, then you need to restart Home Assistant again for the changes to take effect. All right, now that I've restarted Home Assistant again, you can see that it's available. So if I toggle this on, then it will start the simulation. Now if we go to services, there are some services available for this as well. So if we type present, you can see the start, stop and toggle. So under start, you can actually define different entities to start the present simulation with. So I really like this. So this will override the defaults that you've got. So you could set up some automations with some different entities going into this service. And then you can get ones to turn on certain lights in certain parts of your house, for example. So say if you were going away and you didn't want the whole house to be simulated, you could just simulate a certain floor of the house. Now the final thing to mention, as I alluded to earlier, is you need to make sure you've got enough days history so that these simulations can actually occur. So here I've got this set to seven days. So if we go to this documentation here, you can see you need the history integration and you also need the recorder integration. Both of these are enabled by default. So if we go back here and we go to Visual Studio, you can see at the top of my configuration, it's got default config, and that includes the history and the recorder by default. Now, if we go to recorder, you can see there are lots of options that you can configure. So these aren't configured by default, but it's got some defaults already. So if you look here, you can see the default is currently 10 days. So you should be able to simulate 10 days by default. And then after the 10 days, if your simulation is still enabled, it will just roll over and do the same again. So it's probably fine either way. This is one of those things that's fairly easy to set up, but you never know, could have deterred a would-be burglar. Well, that's it for today, so please consider subscribing if you haven't already and liking the video. So thanks, until next time.